Hi, friend. Greetings from Austin, Texas, where I have some hot green tea in my Harry Potter mug. I hope you are doing well coming in from wherever it is in the world that you are coming in from. If you haven't already, say hi in the chat. I know I wanted to say hi to Jeff and Giacomo. So good to see you back here live. Leanne and Anya and Anel and Nathan. Oh, it makes me so happy when I see that we are all cozying in together for a little time together this Wednesday. And so I would like to say, please keep saying hi, drop anything you'd like right here in the chat. It can be where you're coming in from, what's in your cup, maybe what you're most excited to learn about today. If you have questions in real time, if something I say in this workshop doesn't quite make sense, that's what I'm here for. Say, hey, wait a second, go over that again, or I have another question, or can you dig into that deeper? We are at a coffee shop, my friends, and so I need you to give me feedback just as much as I need you here with me giving me feedback. So I'm so excited you're here, and especially today, because we are going to be diving into one of my favorite subjects, and that would be your digital first impression. If you have never joined us at one of these workshops before, welcome. These are really fun workshops. They're not your traditional, very business, uh, super serious workshops. These are fun. These are fresh. These are interactive. It's me. It's you. We're learning together. And there are many, at least call them mini workshops because everything in smaller portions is cuter. It's like when you get the mini candies and Calories don't count because they're so small. So that's why we call this a mini workshop. So it doesn't seem really scary and intimidating. I don't want you to think that. So I want to go over my favorite part, which is the workshop agenda. What the heck are we going to be learning about today? So we've already done the first thing, which is meet me. Check, check. If you're new here, I'm Kim. I'm so happy you're here. And we've already taken care of the first line of business. The next one is getting into Google and LinkedIn when it comes to your digital first impressions. Then we are sliding on into a quick glance at LinkedIn and exactly what that means and what the platform can do for you in terms of your digital first impression. Then we're going into first impression stats. I know sometimes it can be a little tricky when you're like, does this matter? Does this apply? Let's get into the stats, the stats, the facts, the figures. I think that that always helps a little bit more. Then we're going to get into some career capital Q&A. If you don't know what career capital is, don't worry. We will be the first ones to tell you. And then, as you can see, I put here more questions. We love questions. Questions are for you and me to learn together. So feeling very sing-songy today. But I'm excited for your questions as we dig into this subject. So let's rock and roll. As always, I know that I am going to be moving quickly. Your time is precious. My goal is to get you out of here a little early today, maybe give you some time back in your day. And so if I'm going to be rocking, rolling, I need you to say stop. If you have a question, if I'm going too fast, or if I'm going too fast and you're not picking up some of the resources I'm talking about, don't worry. You can go to sendmenotes.com. The notes will come into your inbox by Friday. So in the next 48 hours, you will poof. Get the notes sent directly to you. So if you would like those notes sent, you can go to sendmenotes.com and sign up. If you've already signed up, don't worry. I got you, boo. You don't need to sign up again. One and done. I like to make things easy for you. So um, I also wanted to say that I'm happy that Leanne approves of my Harry Potter mug because let's be honest, anywhere that I can work in a Harry Potter reference, I'm going to do it. That's how that's going to work. So if you're, you're hearing a lot of Harry Potter come out of me, do not be surprised, my friend. Do not be surprised. So let's rock and roll and let's get started when we start to sink into your digital first impression. So a lot of times when I say digital first impression, people are like, what does that even mean? When we say digital first impression, I'm a little confused. Huh? What are you talking about? This is what I'm talking about. Back in the day when you used to go to school, maybe when you were in elementary school or middle school, your mom would like lick her hand and like mat down your hair or maybe lick her finger and get like the cereal off your chin. 
that, you know, you had to look a little nice, you know, it was, who are you going to meet? When you meet someone, you got to have a firm handshake. You got to tuck in your shirt. You got to look presentable. You got to be ready for the interview or when the boss is coming in or when we want to get a promotion, we got to polish ourselves up a little bit. And that worked really well for 50 some odd years. That was the way to go. And then these little iPhones got introduced to us, right? And we had the entire internet in the palm of our hand. And what has happened over the last 10 years, especially the last five years, and especially, especially the last two years has been people will get their first impression of you before they meet you, before they know you, before they get on a Zoom call with you, before they get on a conference call with you. They are already judging you, making assessments about you, telling themselves if you're qualified or unqualified. And I know, I know this is not fair. I know it's not right. I know that you should be judged by you know, the, the topic of conversation and what you can, I know I, I am, you know, I feel like with these iPhones, they brought a lot of good into our lives, but there's also some downsides. And this is one of those downsides that we have now taken out of the equation that very tuck in your shirt, firm handshake, stand up straight first impression. And we have substituted it with your favorite and my favorite, the Google, the Google. How many times are you in a conversation? You can't think of something. You're like, Google it, Google it. Well, people are Googling it to you. They're saying, who's Trixie? I don't know, Trixie, Google her. Who's Joe? I don't know, Joe, Google him. And so I'm curious for everybody who's joining live, because I feel like there are still some pure, Hearted people out there who think, well, I'm not going to Google people before I meet them because I really want to soak in or I really want to give them a fair chance, almost like a blind date, but maybe at work or in life. You're like, I am truly going in blind. I am truly not going to Google my kid's kindergarten teacher. I am truly not going to Google my sister's new boyfriend. I am truly not going to Google my new boss who just got transferred in. Just yes or no, do you Google people that you have not met yet? And I will speak for myself. I Google everyone, 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 everyone. I go to a birthday party. A lot of times I actually do this because I forget details about the person. I, they'll say, oh, you know, I'm friends with Anya. My name is Meredith. And I'll remember Meredith. I'll kind of forget her last name. And later on, I'll know, okay, if I want to find Meredith, I can go on Anya's maybe Facebook or I can go on Anya's Instagram and see if she's following a Meredith. And that way I can find that person. So a lot of times I will, I will end up internet stalking them, whether that is Google stalking or Instagram stalking. I will just Google them all uh, and find people. So it looks like Ellen agrees with me in terms of Googling potential clients. Catherine is always Googling people, as is Jeff. Jen is a sometimes, but not always. But Rhonda is like only Google for business. That's interesting as well in terms of like Googling for business versus Googling for personal. You know, what's that going to look like? I'll Google, I won't Google, or I will Google a client, but I won't Google my sister's new boyfriend. Samantha says, sometimes depending on the context or the meeting or the situation, I will potentially Google people. And why do I mention this? Why do I even bring this up? I bring this up because it really answers the question of digital first impressions and do they matter? Because a lot of people say, well, does that really matter? Is this something that I really need to invest in? As you can see, but all these answers in the chat, people are Googling all the time. So the answer to that is a resounding yes. And the reason I ask that is it's one thing if I tell you it matters and you're like, eh, do I believe Kim? Yes or no. 
it's another thing if what do we have just 25 maybe 30 people in this live chat say yes 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 okay so it's not just me it's not just me getting on my soapbox we have anil and kelly and all these other people saying yes indeed i do google people before they meet them so i wanted to say that it's not just me over here being like this matters so when you are Googling people, why do I get so crazy about LinkedIn? You might think, Kim, you're talking about Google. If, if our digital first impressions matter, shouldn't I be focused on Google? Yes, in, in theory, you can be fo focused on Google, but here's my rub with that. I am lazy. I am tired. I have no time. I have no patience. So I don't know if you are like me and also feel like, listen, I want the most bang for my buck. I'm a little lazy. I don't actually want to put in all of the hours it's going to take. And trying to optimize Google is like trying to optimize Mount Everest, right? You can do it. It's hard. And you're probably going to need an extra oxygen tank. Whereas LinkedIn, much more user friendly, much easier to navigate. And the good part that most people don't know, LinkedIn and Google are BFFs. They talk to each other all the time. They're the best, 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 best of friends. So if you optimize your LinkedIn, good news, indirectly, you're also optimizing your Google, but you are doing it in a much lazier, easier way, which again, for me, and I think you, you want to save time. You want to do more with less. You want a bang for your buck. And I know Anya is with me. Listen, we want the easy way out, especially when it comes to this stuff. You're busy. You have a lot on your plate. Let's keep it as easy, cheesy, breezy as possible. So LinkedIn and Google are BFFs. What does this mean? This means that LinkedIn nine times out of 10 is showing up on page one of your Google results because it gets crawled by Google's SEO. So I am showing you here, if you Google my name, Kim Kalp, just boop, 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 type that into Google, you will see that the third link that comes up about me is burp, 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 my LinkedIn. And for you, I encourage you to do this test on yourself to Google your name. And before anyone even says it, because I know someone's going to type it in the chat, they're going to go, Kim, my name is Steven Schwartz. And there's a million Steven Schwartz. And how do I know that it's paying attention to me? I know Google is very smart. If you put even one piece of information about you, so like Steven Schwartz, Austin, Texas, or Steven Schwartz, Google, if you work at Google or Facebook, if you work at Facebook or Allstate or Geico or wherever it is you work, Google will find you. It's a little bit like the Matrix and Neo, it's like Big Brother. You put one, two little breadcrumbs and zzz, it's finding you. You can't escape the Google. The Google will always find you. And so I think that that's important. I know if you have a hard last name, it's a little bit easier, like Calp, not many Calps. But if you have a common last name, even if you give it a little extra breadcrumb, it will find you. And not only will it find you on Google, it will find your LinkedIn. And I don't care how many amazing things you've done or how much recognition there is. I always like to show this to people because they are constantly amazed when we think of the world's first self-made female billionaire, Sarah Blakely of Spanx. Sarah Blakely has been on the cover of Time. Sarah Blakely has been a guest shark on Shark Tank. Sarah Blakely is part of Warren Buffett's uh, pledge. She's just, she's done a lot of stuff. She's opened up the NASDAQ when Spanx, when public, just a lot of stuff. If you Google Sarah Blakely, yes, she's done all these amazing things, but the third thing that comes up on Google is that is her LinkedIn. It's not necessarily her time article. It is her LinkedIn. Same thing with another familiar name, Richard Branson. He went to space and still yet on page one of Richard Branson's Google results is the one, the only LinkedIn. So I don't wanna say that you are not talented. You are talented. However, do we, 
think that we're as talented as Richard Branson? Hmm. I didn't go to space this month. Something tells me you didn't either. So I'm just saying I'm not a billionaire. Something tells me you're not either. So we're not billionaires and we're not going to space. So if their stuff on LinkedIn is showing up in page one of Google, something tells me ours is also because we don't have that stuff going on. So if it's coming up for them, then boom, it's also coming up for you. So what does that mean? Again, digital first impression. You see that Trixie is coaching your kid's soccer team or you see that Trixie is your new a teacher, you see the Trixie is your new boss, you see the Trixie is the new marketing manager, or you see Trixie is the new client. So boom, you are putting Trixie's name into Google. You are seeing that her LinkedIn comes up on page one of her Google results. So now it's time to take a quick look at Trixie. What are we seeing? What is going on? You've heard me harp about this time and time again, and I will continue to do it that this first part of your LinkedIn profile is the most important because people only spend three to five seconds on your profile. I'm going to say it again a little slower for the ones in the back. Three to five seconds on your, not three to five minutes. No, no, no. Three to five seconds, which means we literally have the time, like the time that it's taking me to snap, boom, someone's clicked on, scrolls, they're off. So people say, oh, but Kim, what? No, no, three to five seconds. Immediately, immediately, we need to be capturing their eyeballs because here is the thing. Everybody's eyeballs immediately want to go to the next thing. So kind of like catching a fish, we got to hook them and lure them in to your profile so that they're like, oh, I don't want to stay here for three to five seconds. I want to stay here for three to five minutes. I want to stalk. I want to luxuriate in this person's work history or where they went to school. So again, you kind of think of it like that fish. We want to bait somebody in those three to five seconds and say, okay, how do I hook them? And this is important because in those three to five seconds, if someone sees that you don't necessarily have a profile picture or you don't necessarily have a strong banner put up or you don't necessarily have your headline position filled out or your about section that's easy to read, again, they're, they're, they've already bounced off. So this is like the bare minimum that you need to have. And again, if I'm going quickly, you can always go to helpmylinkedin.com and you can get the download where I go over this in, in PDF form. So you can go a little slower with it. But again, we're cruising and cruising and bruising today. So that's helpmylinkedin.com if you need it. But again, three to five seconds is very, very quick. So if they bounce off of here, if they say, I don't know. I Googled Trixie and it's just not, it's not doing it for me. I'm not really getting it. You're already saying no. Like you're taking that quick looks at, look at Trixie and you're like, mm, I don't know. Between her and somebody else, between her and Jim and Jim looks amazing. You're like, boom, I've already favored Jim. I know. I know. You're like, but Kim, this isn't fair. Trixie could be so much better than Jim. I know this. You know this. But it's kind of like how you and I both know that we should eat broccoli and go to the gym. But we eat cheeseburgers and we skip gym days. Just because we know something doesn't mean we do it. So I just want to be a little cautious with us that I know that that doesn't seem fair, but that's what's actually happening. So in those three to five seconds, people are going, mm, I don't know, maybe we shouldn't call her in for the next meeting. Maybe we shouldn't necessarily have her come in for that promotion opportunity or to lead this project. It's just, it's just a no, it's not going to work. And so that's why it's so important, as Kelly pointed out here, to keep that LinkedIn profile polished ready to go because I know three to five seconds is just not that long. So we are going to play a little game right now. So we're going to play a little game. Let's roll up our sleeves, let's put on our thinking caps, and we're going to play a little game. 
If you don't have your screen on, I'm going to describe this to you, but I'm also going to time this. We are going to set the timer for five seconds. I know five seconds, which is what we've been saying. And I say five seconds, even though as Anya pointed out earlier for millennials, it's probably two seconds, which I don't, thanks to TikTok, it probably is two seconds. I'm going to set this for five seconds. I'm going to flash something on screen right now. I'm going to flash something on screen and there's going to be a choice A and a choice B. And when I flash this on screen for five seconds, you're going to type in A or B, which one that your eyes, your eyeballs naturally gravitate towards because our eyes, our eyes are, are kind of like our stomachs, right? Our tummies are like, Ooh, candy. And our tummies see broccoli and they're like, mm, broccoli. So our eyeballs do the same thing. They're like, Hmm, looks appealing versus Hmm, does not look appealing. So I'm going to flash something on the screen for five minutes. You're going to have to show it five minutes. We wish five seconds. And you are going to answer A or B. So Get your fingers, get that index finger ready to type. Okay, I'm going to put it on screen and I'm going to give you five seconds ready and go. A or B, A or B. Boom, five seconds. I, I told you, I told you that five seconds was so fast. So type in the chat A or B, which one your eyes naturally went to where did your eyeballs fall not where you wanted them to fall but where they actually went so we have josh and courtney saying a jen and jeff and olga and sam and wendy and tom and kelly and rachel and mary and cynthia and jim are all saying a and i will also say a and for anyone who does not have their screen on, and Danny also says A, and for anyone who doesn't have their screenshot or doesn't have their screen on, I'm going to, I'm going to put it back on. So choice A is a profile that is completely filled out. There is a beautiful banner. It has bright colors in it. There is a profile picture. There is a services section, which has like a beautiful gray bar. It it looks robust and it looks complete. Whereas B, there's no banner, there's no profile picture, there is not a lot of description or copy anywhere. And again, naturally, our eyeballs tend to go to what is colorful, what is completely filled out. We like to see things that are complete. It's kind of like if you look at a puzzle if you've ever seen a puzzle and it's missing one piece, by the way, that is always evil. When someone has a thousand piece puzzle and someone decides to take one piece, there is a special place down south for those people. You know what I mean? You don't steal the one puzzle piece of a thousand piece puzzle. It's just wrong. So anyways, you know, when you see a thousand piece puzzle, if one little piece is missing, your eyeballs are like, <gasps> The one piece is missing. Even though there's a whole, there's 999 other pieces, you immediately go to what is missing. So I know that this is like, oh my gosh, like, holy moly, I just, but is this really true? I'm telling, we're going to go through some quick facts right now about this because you might be like, mm, I don't know. Um, and Jen was asking if B was a fake person. B is not a fake person. B is a real person. That is a second connection with me. So this is real stuff. Uh, this is not fake news. I'll even make it a little bit bigger. I'll take myself out of it just so you can really see the difference between A and B and what that looks like. But yes, B is a real person person. That is something that is real life that is happening. So that is definitely not something that I made up, although it would be pretty great if I did. So let's rock and roll with some quick facts. And again, I, I love the interaction and hopefully you did too. So I will give you a little pop quiz here. How long do you think it takes to make a first impression? So when you first 
meet someone or maybe first interact with someone, how long do you think it takes to make that first impression? Again, we know that it's three to five seconds in terms of online, but maybe you might think to yourself, hmm, maybe it's a little better in person. Maybe in person, I have more of a, a fighting chance, if you will, to make a good impression or have that person feel the warm and fuzzies when it comes to me. So we have a lot of guesses coming in. Wendy is saying five seconds, John Philip with five seconds, LaRonda with 10 seconds, Josh 10 to 15, Anya three seconds, absolutely. Caddy one minute. So I know this is kind of crazy, but people make a first impression of someone else within seven seconds, seven seconds. I know. And honestly, guys, there's been a ton of studies and I'll share some of those in the resources, really fascinating books on this that I totally geek out on, but really interesting. And I think it comes, a lot of it comes back to the caveman days right? And if you joined us with Vanessa Van Edwards a couple of weeks ago, when she was talking about cues, things like having, you know, open palms, I'm not holding any weapons or things where it's like, is this person, is this a saber tooth tiger? Are they going to eat me from the caveman days? Or, oh, is this a friendly person that's going to help protect me? So it's really quick first impressions of people. We do not have a lot of time. So I wanted to give Another, another little pop quiz of, I know I asked earlier how many people admit to Googling people. And there's a lot of people here who admit to Googling people, but on average, if you had to guess how many people Google other people before meeting them, what percentage would that be? So it's obviously not going to be 100%. We don't have 100% of every single person who's like, yes, I'm definitely going to Google that person. But just in general, I was pretty shocked by this number. And I think you might be too. 72% of people admit to researching people before meeting them, whether that is using social media or Google. We have really cut back on meeting people in a blind way. We want to know about them. We want to get some inside scoop and they want to figure out what's exactly going on before I meet this person. And why is that? It's because we feel like we can trust our own instincts and our own evaluations better than even meeting the person. And I know this sounds crazy, but it really is true because 61% of people believe they can instantly spot a phony, someone who's you know fake, doesn't really understand what's going on, the minute they meet that person. So 61% of us think, oh yeah, I, I can tell a phony from a mile away. I can tell that that guy or gal is fake news and they don't know what they're talking about and we can't trust them, that's not gonna happen. Again, I know this is like shocking that that so many people think this way. But again, as I told you before, I totally geek out on stuff like this, whether it is Vanessa Van Edwards and her new book, Cues, and before that, her book, Captivate, which I highly recommend and have read. Uh, I also know that Malcolm Gladwell goes into this pretty extensively in his book, Blink, the power of thinking without thinking. So that came out uh, several years back, but that is another good one. Again, if you haven't read it, quick synopsis, just really going into how in, again, the blink of an eye, hence the title of the word blink, we are making assessments, judgments. We are making decisions about people, places, things before we even have a significant amount of data. It is just how... It's how our brains work. It's how we survived the dinosaur ages. That is just how it goes, how it kind of goes. So again, that's another great resource. If you haven't read it, I highly, highly suggest you do. So I know that digital first impressions can be intimidating and that's why I would love to do it 
with you. I would love to do it with you. So I have a new cohort that we are putting together on April 12th with deep dives into this subject, deep dives into how to refresh your first impression online, how to dig into your LinkedIn and make sure that it is optimized and easy on the eyes so that you connect with power players and boost your influence. And I know several people that are here today, whether it is Anya or Jeff or Kelly, have gone through this program and I swear I'm not making it up. It has been really helpful and encouraging to see the skyrocketing success that they have seen when it comes to optimizing your LinkedIn and optimizing your first impressions online because it, again, it is something that is just not going away. So I know a lot of people joining have questions because I have sent them here all about the Career Capital Program, what it is, what we're gonna be doing, if it's the right fit for them, if it makes sense. So I wanted to make sure to take time today to sit with you and answer a lot of these Q&A questions in person, in real time, as you have them. So if you have questions about your digital first impression, if you have questions about the program specifically, if you have questions about how you can optimize around making sure that people see you for the complete rock star that you are, feel free to type them in the chat so that we can tackle them together. I want to kick us off with a few questions that were sent to me via email before we started today, and then we can mix in some live questions that you have in the chat. So as you have questions, drop them on in the chat and we will get to them. So one of the first questions that I got via email, or this could have been DM, this could have been DM to me, was when are we meeting you and me? are going to meet and everybody else, but you know, you and me, we're gonna meet. We're gonna meet for more coffee. Uh, we're gonna meet on Mondays from 7 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're gonna meet on Thursday afternoons from 1 to 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. We're also going to have some Fridays sprinkled in there with some bonus sessions and some office hours. Those are totally optional, but this is time where you and I get to sink in and dive deep together. We're going to be meeting twice a week for four weeks. So that is eight sessions, but again, there's going to be some bonus. There's some, there's some office hours, but just know there's a minimum of eight sessions that you and I are going to be diving deep together, getting into the nitty gritty of your digital first impression of your LinkedIn profile of how you communicate your narrative with others. So these are going to be really fun sessions that are power packed with actionable tactics, tips, formats, setups. This is not something that you kind of lean back and kind of consume. No, you are leaning in. There is a lot of stuff to start implementing right away. This is not theoretical. This is an action-based program, action-based plan, because if I could sink into your body and do it myself, I would, but I can't. I have to live in my body and you have to live in your body. So I'm going to need your work with me on that. So I want to tackle John Phillips' question. How do we connect with new people in your new career on LinkedIn if we had a career change? This is such a juicy subject to get into because we should always be extending our network as much as possible. But if you have recently switched careers or if you are thinking about switching careers, here are two steps that I want you to do immediately. Number one, Whatever career you just moved into, whatever industry that is, maybe you move from banking to fitness, or maybe you move from healthcare to dental. I don't know what you switched into, but whatever you switched into, whatever that new industry is, pick five people on LinkedIn 
that you think are movers and shakers and are active on the platform in that industry. So maybe one person owns a dental office. Maybe one person does dental sales. If dental is your category, pick five people that you can start to like their posts, comment on their posts, maybe connect with them directly. Not that you have anything to ask, not that you have anything to sell, just to kind of interact with them on the platform. So that's number one, pick five people and start to interact with them in the new industry that you either just got into, or if you want to switch careers, the new industry that you want to be in, not the one that you're currently in right now. And number two, go back through your profile. And this is something that we can work on together. Go back through your profile and optimize it for your new role. So again, this is a silly example, but we'll still use it. If you wanted to go from the fitness industry into dental, your past experience might really be geared towards fitness. I taught five classes a week with 30 cyclers in each class. But to really convert that into your new role for dental, you might want to say, I worked with small groups several times a week, dealing with different personalities and different changing priorities. Again, that's just off the cuff. That's an example. But you want to rewrite and really highlight and bring to the surface how your old skills, what you've done, here we go, what you've done and how that now applies to what you do. So we don't want to talk about what you've done. What you've done is dinosaur. That's that's old news. We want to talk about what you're doing. We want to talk about what you're doing now and how those skills, how those that that skill set you can take lessons from that and you can apply it now to what you're doing. So Hopefully that helps answer the question, John Philip. But those are the two things that I would do right now if you are switching jobs or thinking about switching jobs from one career to another, because I think that that could be really interesting. If it is difficult to be there during those hours, during that Monday to Thursday, 7 to 8.30 and Thursday, 1 to 2.30, are there replays of the meeting? Yes, there are 100% replays of the meeting. You do not have to join live. It's fun if you can join live, but of course you do not have to. And that's why we try to stagger the hours as well. So I know sometimes people are based all over the world. And so we want to make sure that if it is nighttime in the United States, Obviously, that's going to be the middle of the night overseas, but if it's the daytime, then it's only the late afternoon. So we try to vary up the times so that at different days or different times, everybody feels like they get the chance to join live. But yes, absolutely, they will be recorded. Absolutely, you can watch them later and you can always see them on your own time. So that's just something to to keep in mind. Another question that we got sent before going live today was what deliverables will I walk away with? And I love this point because it means that people are like me and they're very type A and they're like, what am I getting? What am I delivering? So I love that you're like me um, because you want to know what exactly am I going to be walking away with? So you are going to be walking away with number one, a networking system. If you don't have a system for networking, you will not do it. Why? Because it's not consistent and it won't be something that you can repeat. So you have to get a system in place, period, end of story. It's a soapbox. It's a hill I'm willing to die on. So that's number one. Number two, you will have a structured plan in place for leveraging mentors and advocates. This is key in terms of getting you to network with the right people, getting advice from the right people, that is going to be key. Number three, you will have an optimized LinkedIn profile. As we just saw in this mini workshop, when you have three to five seconds, when 61% of people feel like they can judge you before they even meet you, when people have seven seconds, when they're even seeing you in person to judge you, having an optimized LinkedIn profile is no longer a nice to have. 
It is a necessity. Let me say that again. An optimized LinkedIn profile is no longer a nice to have. Oh, that'd be so nice when I got to that. Oh, maybe for my spring cleaning. No, it is a necessity. It is a necessity if you want to get to a position at work that you feel like you should be in. Number four, a template of how to apply for awards and honors. This is feeling so sticky icky. People hate to talk about awards and honors, but again, you are freaking awesome. And we are not going to hold our breath and wait for your boss or your boss's boss or your boss's boss's boss to recognize you. I don't think so. We're taking matters into our own dang hands. And we are going after things that we want for you. We're not going to wait our turn, nicey, nicey, behind anybody. Because you know what? Your boss is busy. And your boss's boss is super busy. And your boss's boss's boss is super, super busy. So we are not waiting for them. We're not waiting for them to pay attention to you and what you do. And then last but not least, we are going to create a game plan together to share your expertise and your knowledge online. So that is what we are going to be doing together over the course of four weeks. It is going to be super fun. You can read more about the program in addition to what I've been saying here by going onto my website, kimcalp.com. There's tons of testimonials and examples and more details and an outline about how to go and look up more information about that. So you can always look up more stuff. In the meantime, I am going to keep updating you with interesting things that I find about LinkedIn, about your digital first impressions online. There are two ways that you can get this information via LinkedIn. I, you guys are going to laugh. You're going to be like, she always harps on this. But y'all, I'm not kidding. I consistently get, and Shelby can back me up, I consistently get messages in my inbox that are like, I didn't get that or I didn't see that. So it's like, I'm just going to keep repeating it until I'm like blue in the face because until I stop getting the messages, then I'll know that everybody knows this. So if you don't already press the follow button on my profile or this new little alarm bell profile that's on my profile, it's right under the banner on the right hand side next to the little gold LinkedIn symbol. There's a little bell. You can click that. And what that will do is every single time I post a video, an article, uh, a poll, anything that I think is going to help you, you will get notified about it. You'll get like one of those little notifications on your LinkedIn so that the next time that you join, you will see it. So I always say that because people are always like, I don't know what you're talking about. I am, I am confused. I didn't get it. So you can do one of these two things. And that way I know that you are getting the content that I am putting out. I also wanted to point out this really good reference point from Jeff that the course and working together over the four weeks is really at the heart of it. It's getting to the point that we want people, we want to feel like we know what other people are thinking of us and how they're viewing us. Because as I said last week, it is really, really hard to read the label from inside the jar. And I'm going to say that again. It is really hard to read the label from inside the jar. And again, I will use myself as an example. From inside the jar, I could say like, ah, oh, this is great. Things are great. Like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then from the outside of the jar, it looks like a bunch of mumbo jumbo. People are like, you might think that you know what you're talking about, but to all of us out here, this looks like some mumbo jumbo that nobody knows what you're talking about. So we are not objective when it comes to ourselves. We do not have a good third party perspective when it comes to ourselves. We cannot even be fair. If anything, we're slightly meaner to ourselves, quite frankly, than other people would be. So it's just one of those things that we really need to think about 
how are other people seeing us? It's not something that, oh man, I can't believe I need help with this. I, I tell people all the, all the time, I had to hire somebody. I do this for a living. I've done this for a living for a decade. I had to hire somebody because no one is above getting outside of their own jar, which means you cannot read your label. You can't. You cannot read your label. And by the way, it helps to have lots of people reading your label, which is why this cohort program is so powerful because it's not just me, although I do love my own opinion. It's not just me (laughs) giving you feedback. It's other leaders. It's other executives being like, have you thought of that? What about this? Huh? What about that? So these are... These are amazing powerhouse people like Jeff, like Anya, like Kelly, who are giving you feedback based on tweaks and changes that you are making in real time to your digital first impression. So hopefully that was a quick overview. And as always, I would love to see you join me back here. We meet live every single Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern here on LinkedIn. We also stream live to Facebook and YouTube. If you are a big lover of those platforms as well, you can go to getcoffeewithkim.com and see our full calendar of upcoming mini workshops and deep dive interviews with interesting leaders, founders, and executives. And I know it might be hard if you miss one of these or you can't join live. Don't worry. These are also in podcast form. So every single Tuesday, if you haven't already, go to your favorite podcast subscriber, whether that is Apple Podcasts, whether that is Stitcher, whether that is Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, log on there, search for Coffee with Kim, and you will see me staring into a coffee cup, wondering how much is left in here? How much caffeine can I still get out of this cup? Press subscribe and every single Tuesday, we will drop the audio version of this live in there for you to catch up on. So I would love to see you subscribe to the podcast and selfishly, can you shoot us a review? If you shoot us a review and send me a message, I don't know, I'll think of some awesome surprise to send you. Maybe like a pony, not a pony, but something else that I'll think of that's really fun. Maybe a Starbucks gift card, that seems, or maybe a Gregory's gift card because Jeff has really turned me on to Gregory's. So maybe it'll be Gregory's. But what if there's no Gregory's where you are? Okay, maybe Starbucks because Starbucks are everywhere. Either way, it's a pony or Starbucks and it's coming to you. Write a review on the podcast. I would love to see it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Big thank you to Anya and Andrew and Jeff and Giacomo and LaRonda and Scott and everybody else who is able to join. It means the world to me to see you come on here with me live and hang out on your Wednesday. So hopefully this digital first impression workshop was helpful for you. And I will see you right here next Wednesday, same time, same place, sending you a big cheers from Austin, Texas. Have an amazing rest of the week.